Welcome back to another episode of Riding with Robin. This week, it's all about insurance. Who needs insurance and where can I get it? We also have a very special guest joining us this week, so let's get right on into the video. Welcome to Cindy Cohen School of Driving and Third Party PennDOT Testing Center. Today we have with us Larry George from Larry George Insurance Agency. I have been with Larry for the past 10 years. I've been purchasing insurance from him. He's a great guy. He's there when you need him. Um, he will reassure that everything that you need and all your coverages are taken care of. He's located in Trafford, PA. His phone number is 412-373-2276. So I put together a few questions today to ask Larry some of the common questions that we get here at Cindy Cohen School of Driving. So my first question for you today, Larry, and thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. Glad to be here. When a teenager obt obtains their PA learner's permit, do parents need to add them to their insurance policy? Mostly no, but it depends on the company that you have. Um, <clears throat> typically, uh, companies will want to know that the teenager is driving, but they won't charge for it. So there'll be a subsection in there that says, you know, under learner's permit, things like that. Uh, once the teen passes his or her test and uh, obtains that driver's license, that is when the parents need to make sure that the teen is added as a driver onto their policy. Okay, great. So as soon as they pass their PA learner's driver's license, right. that's when they need to call the insurance company. Yeah. And that's specifically with Erie Insurance or all insurance companies across the board? I know it is yeah. with Erie, correct? Yeah, um, my two big carriers are Erie and Travelers at my office. And in both cases, uh, again, we, we just asked that uh, we'd like to know, we'd like to have a copy of the learner's permit. We'll document the file because there have been cases where the an accident has occurred and if the teenager doesn't show up as a driver, we just want to know the backstory on that. But as soon as you reasonably can, after you pass that test, you want to contact your agent and uh, let them know that uh, the young person has passed. Thanks, Larry. What should we look for when we're shopping for insurance? You want to look really for a number of things, and uh, it's going to be certain things are going to be more important to different people. For some people, price is the only thing that they worry about, and I, okay, I'll respect that. But I think there's a lot more to it than that. Um, I believe that you want an agent locally in your community that's important to, to me, it's important to my clients that you can talk to, get information from. Insurance is a very important thing, you know, and it's it's. You, you don't worry about it until you need it, and then you start thinking about what are my coverage limits and things like that. So different people are going to shop for different things. Um, I always tell people, I said, you shop long enough and hard enough, you'll find somebody that'll be $150 a year less than me. But you know, am I worth that as your agent? So I think they want to look for somebody who is uh, accessible in the community. Uh, I'm not a real fan at all of these 1-800 numbers that you call and get a different person every time. Again, because you want that relationship and you want somebody who's knowledgeable in the uh, coverage limits. Thank you. What are some ways to get discounts on insurance when you're a teenager? You have to remember again that the insurance industry, uh, as, as bad as it gets maligned sometimes, it's it's largely uh, pretty basic, a mathematical formula. We base uh, you know, the probability of accidents on, uh, on uh, the, pro I'm sorry, we, pay, we, we uh, base the, 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 the premiums on the probability of having accidents. Certain companies do different things, okay? Uh, of my two large carriers, Travelers provides a discount for good grades. You know, you come in with a uh, B plus average, give or take, and they actually set aside a discount. Erie does not do that. And and several years ago, I asked one day, uh, was, uh, I was in a meeting with some of the corporate officers, and said, why don't we offer it? And they said, well, interestingly enough, we run the numbers on it, and there is no appreciable difference in the number of accidents in the first couple of years between a kid who has got a B plus average versus a kid that's got a C minus average. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, certain companies do it, certain don't. I think the most important thing here, you've got to accept the fact that as a young driver, you are going to pay a lot of money 
for insurance. The mm -hmm. first few years are going to be awful, but the idea is to get you through those first few years mm -hmm. without any major hits. The things that concern me is we have situations in our office where people come in and the the 17 year old driver's already had two at fault accidents. Mm -hmm. uh, one's pretty serious, and and this tends to be a statistical trauma that will follow them. And there's there's reams of data to show that that. For example, somebody who has had two at-fault accidents in the past three years is about almost 90% more likely to have a third at-fault accident in the next five years. I and mean, we can track this stuff. So learning how to drive, going to somewhere like here, like the Cindy Cohen School of Driving, where you're really getting taught, and then taking it seriously. Uh, driving is, is, you know, I always joke, I, I've, I've spent some time in military trainers, and I've uh, Boeing 737 simulators and you know I always say there's a lot going on in the cockpit okay so I tell the young people you know, when you're flying you're flying when you're driving you're driving and some of the biggest problems we're having today and you've probably seen it too is Distra distracted driving yes. it's just out of control and, um, and and I blame the manufacturers for some of that because they keep adding more and more stuff to the these uh, cars so. I don't know if I answered your question, but that's kind of my feeling. Yes, yeah, so at Cindy Cohen School of Driving, we do offer a certificate that when um, a student will complete six hours behind the wheel, uh, they would be able to submit that to the insurance company. Yeah. Does your insurance yes. company accept that? Yeah, almost all companies do that. Both okay. my major carriers uh, and even my third carrier, Progressive, do that. Uh, and any of the reputable major carriers around the United States typically are going to have a discount for that driver training. Interesting. Thank you. Well worth the money. So we have a large population of foreign students. Oftentimes when they pass their exam at Cindy Cohen School of Driving, they leave here with their license and they go straight to a car dealership mm -hmm. to purchase a vehicle. Right. Do they have to have insurance before they get to the car dealership, or do they purchase the car and then call you for the insurance? How does that work? Excellent question. And in Pennsylvania here, uh, you cannot register a car. Well, I mean, you could, but it's illegal. In order to properly register a car, you, it has to be insured with at least what we call minimum limits of coverage as per statute, okay? Uh, so they would need to technically uh, contact an agent, contact an insurance company, whatever they're going to do, and uh, secure an insurance policy at the time that they are going to purchase the car. They would need to have that. The uh, notary at the dealership uh, will fill out the MV1, the MV4, whatever it might be, and there's a complete section in there. And we, they actually now have to photocopy the actual insurance document. They don't rely anymore just on putting it onto the MV4. Uh, so it, it's kind of a cart before the horse kind of thing because if you're just going out shopping and you don't know which car you're getting, you just don't know. But in order for a, an insurance agent to get you a policy or a binder, he or she needs to know the year, make, model, and the VIN number of the vehicle. So what I recommend typically is uh, in anticipation of an event like this, start shopping around, you know, start looking around and maybe have something in mind where you can say to the dealership, hey, I'd like to put $200 down on this to hold it, you know, I'm taking my test this Saturday and if I pass my test, uh, I'm going to get with my insurance agent, I'll have the ID card and uh, that usually works out of that. But they do have to have it, they cannot go purchase a vehicle in this state and uh, drive off into the uh, sunset without uh, valid insurance. That's wow. a statute requirement. Well, that's great information, Larry. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I appreciate you coming in today to um, educate us. And again, this is Larry George from Larry George's Larry George Insurance Agency. And again, his phone number is 412-373-2276. Please give him a call. He's a great guy. Like I said, I've been using him for 10 years and I'm very confident in his work. Thank you. We'd like to give a very special thank you to Cindy for joining us this week and asking Larry all of these amazing questions. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Riding with Robin. Join us next time where I get the chance to sit down with another one of our awesome instructors. We'll see you then.